what I'm going to do is uh, share a screen with uh, Rich Base Online on it. And I'm going to let me log off here so I can log back in and see it from the, from the start. When you uh, visit, when you first go to BridgeBase, mm -hmm. BridgeBase.com, this is this is the, the the screen you get, and there's a login button up in the upper right here. So I'm going to just log in. And the account I'm using is one that is this one, BMO Joe South. It remembers me, so it remembers my password and all. And this is kind of the, the default screen you get. Um, this, this account is not tied to an ACBL number or something like that. I have four accounts that I used with the Bridge Mojo game on Monday nights, so I could uh, use, the, use their robots to fill a half table. Uh, so Angela remembers that because she actually played against them a little bit. Uh, but there's a very important step that I want to get first. And if you're going to play in the ACBL virtual clubs, you have to record your ACBL number with, with BridgeBase Online. This is the home screen, and there's a featured area here called ACBL World. So if you click there and you go down in where it shows all the upcoming, upcoming tournaments, here where it says update your ACBL number, you need to tap there and put your ACBL number in here. And that way um, it'll be recorded and we should know who you are and you'll get your master points if you win some and, and, and you'll be allowed into the games. The other thing that you need to do is to buy some bridge based dollars. I'm gonna, it's, it's kind of straightforward. There's a button here in the upper right, it says BB dollars. If you tap that, then it gives you a screen to purchase bridge based dollars. It'll open a new window and you can either use PayPal or a credit card and, and that's the thing to do. Now I want to give you a warning about buying bridge based dollars. If you use an iPad and I do myself, uh, playing bridge based on an iPad is very good. You can buy them from a shop button that's in the lower right corner, but they mark up the bridge based dollars. They will sell you $10 for 13. So you pay them 13 and I think Apple gets the overflow. So don't do it that way. Go to your computer use the BB dollar button up here, and that's how you get your bridge based dollars. Now, once you're logged in. Mojo, I have a um, suggestion also. Yeah. You can uh, have them automatically uh, charge an amount when your bridge based dollars uh, get low. Yes, I do that. In fact, um, you can set it up automatically. Uh, and you'll see how to do that uh, when you start doing it. Um, anytime my uh, balance drops below $10, it adds another $20 to the account, just charges it automatically to the credit card. So that's kind of convenient. Um, okay, so the next thing is finding the virtual clubs. And since the ACBL has moved all of its clubs that used to be brick and mortar bridge clubs online, um, this is how you find them. This is the, the main home screen, and it's the competitive button here. See where it says competitive? If you click that and you hear, go here to ACBL Virtual Clubs, these are all of the upcoming games. I'm gonna move this off to the side. Next one here starting up in 10 minutes is the Alliance uh, Green 49, 499er game starting at 5.45 Eastern time. I don't, I'm not sure where Alliance is, but it's, it's really kind of fun to just scroll through this and see how many clubs. These are all uh, virtual ACBL clubs, and they all have a host that starts with the name VACB, virtual ACBL. Uh, ours will do that as well. I have a club number that's been assigned by the ACBL. Here's a tip for finding your club. Say you wanna find um, the Rochester games. Uh, up in the right, there's a search box. And what you'll be able to do at my games is just type Pasadena. Nothing comes up because there isn't one. Uh, if I type Rochester, here you go. There's the three Rochester games. So rather than scrolling through hundreds and hundreds of virtual bridge games that are starting up, 
that's a good way to find them. You see unit 556, they're nearby, but they don't have a game starting, starting right away. So that's a good way to play it. Um, this button here, there are three games up here, pending, running, complete. This shows the games that are actually running right now. If I pick one of these, see here the Bakersfield pairs, they've got 12 tables in play. If I click that, it will show who's playing. Uh, but kibitzing is not allowed at the virtual bridge clubs, so you can't actually join a game and, and watch what's going on. But it is kind of interesting to see that that is a feature. The complete games, here's a Laguna Woods game that's complete. Let's see what they do here. Oh, it shows the results of the game. That's handy. So most recently, re most recently ended games, they'll have the results there. Okay. Now, um, I'm back at the home page, and I want to point out something. BridgeBase Online, they've had technical difficulties because they've managed, I mean, they suddenly have 10 times as many, as many, let me see if there's anybody else waiting to enter. Yeah, I've got two here. They suddenly have 10 times as many users as they did, and they, they didn't really design the site originally to uh, to handle that many users. So they've had to kind of cobble things together quickly. Uh, one of the things that they did just recently, what they've done is all of their players are on one server, which those of us who design scalable applications say that that's, that's insane. You never design one server to handle your entire population. So what they've had to do is they've split the competitive games, the tournaments, away from the casual bridge. So what happens if you go to the casual button here to play casual bridge, you get that logging in message, and uh, you're now on a different server. Uh, the players who are playing in tournaments and such cannot reach you uh, if you're in the casual section. If you're signed up to play in a tournament, it will not pull you from the casual section back over to the uh, regular game. So I've now, I've left, I just hit the back button and I've left the casual section. And here I, I can go to the competitive games and find the virtual clubs and the robot tournaments and everything else that you might wanna play. Um, so what I'm going to do now is create a table. And if you have friends you wanna play with, you might enjoy watching this because I'm going to start my own table and invite my own players. Um, I'm going to start with the, uh, here's the start a table button here. This is my table. So I get to set, set up all of the uh, options for it. I don't want kibitzers. I don't want kibitzers to chat with the players. I'm going to make it an invisible table. And um, now I'm going to put myself in here as South. And I've got four other accounts on other computers. One, they're sitting right next to me. There we go. East and North, my partner. Hello. Okay, I've got all my invitations going on, and now what I'm going to do is start the game. So on my other three screens where those players are, they've all gotten invitations. The invitation says, a seat is reserved for you. Take you there? Yes, please. And so, oh, do this here. So now this is a bridge-based table, and we have a hand being dealt. That's nice. These are all the players. This is my seat. I'm sitting in south. My partner's sitting at north. And of course, this is the hand I have. Um, I'm going to ignore what the cards are, and I'm just going to make some bids. Um, let's see. Whose bid is it? I'm going to say my partner opens a bidding one no trump, and this player passes. And now it's my turn to bid. Here's the key, of course. This is your bidding box. Notice that I can pass or I can uh, I can choose any bid I like. If I want to make a three bid, 
I can just say three no trump like this. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, I wanna make a special bid. Uh, let's say I play a fancy system uh, and three diamonds. Let's say that three diamonds, I use three diamonds as a splinter bid. That's kind of a, a, an expert sort of thing. Now that's an alertable bid. So I'm gonna, before I make the bid, I'm gonna tap the alert box and I'm gonna type in the explanation. I haven't made my bid yet, but I'm gonna say it's a splinter. It's short in diamonds. And I'm, now I'm gonna make the bid, three diamonds. And you see here the explanation. Now this explanation is interesting. I made the bid and I alerted it myself. Now this is one of the things that is different and actually better in online bridge than it is an in in-person bridge. In in-person bridge, I would say three diamonds and my partner would say alert and the opponents would ask my partner to explain it. In online bridge, you alert your own bids and the opponents see the alert and see your explanation, your partner does not. So my partner did not see that I explained my three diamond bid to the opponents. So let's see whose bid it is now. I'm gonna carry on with a pass and I'll say that my partner bids, um, <laughs> where am I? Three, no Trump. And then we're gonna pass and I'm gonna pass and I'm gonna pass. And so that ends the auction and there's an explanation. Uh, let's see whose lead is it? It's uh, East, East lead. We don't care what they lead. We're in three no Trump, we're gonna lead this one. Here's the first card to the first trick. Um, now this is my, uh, whose hand is this? This is my partner's hand. So I'm gonna play from the dummy and I'm going to have, let's see. And play from my hand. Okay, this is the first trick has been played. This is an interesting moment because it's now West's turn to play and they're going to play a card. Now, here's an interesting point. Suppose, you hadn't played to this trick yet, but you forgot what was played on the last trick. Uh, and it's gone, it's, it's invisible, I can't see it. But the point is until you play to the trick, you can actually go back and look at the last trick. Look over here at the trick record. These are the tricks we've won and these are the tricks we've lost. You see them vertical and horizontal, just like always. I have somebody waiting to get into the into the thing. I'll come back to that in a moment. If I tap on this trick record, look how it shows me the last trick. Isn't that handy? Now, um, you tap there and it goes away, but tap on the trick record and it will show you the last trick. It will do that until you have played to the next trick. So that's a handy thing. Here's another interesting feature. You're in the middle of the hand. Somebody have a Hi, question? Mojo, this is, yes, this is Julie Miller. I was Hi, wondering, you, Hi, did you set up all these account yourself so you could, can you play with yourself and your Jane and then set up two robots if you don't have a third and a fourth? Yeah, you can. Um, I think that's, I haven't actually done that, but we will. <laughs> okay. It is, it, there is a way to do it. And Jane and I do it. She'll log in with her account. I'll log in with mine and then I'll set up a table with a pair of robots. We can do that. Okay. Let me let me see if I have some people coming in. Here we go. Okay, so um, we we see how to see the previous trick. There's another trick as well. That the bidding, unlike at a live bridge table, where it, when the game starts, when you, the play starts, you're not allowed to review the bidding. In online bridge, you can. I don't know why, but you can. Notice here where it says the contract, three no Trump by North. If you tap on that, it shows you the auction. Handy. If I wanted to go back and remember, did, did one of my opponents make an overcall? You can do that. You just, just tap on the auction and it'll 
tap on the contract and they'll bring up the whole auction. Let me show you some other things that are on this screen, by the way. Just see the square over here with the big one on it. It's kind of important. This is board number one. The D marks who the dealer is, so North was the dealer. And these sides indicate the vulnerability. And board number one, no one is vulnerable. So they're all white. When you're in boards two, three, and four, what have you, where there's some vulnerability on it, these sides turn red. Now, if, if the left and right sides are red, it means that your opponents are vulnerable. If the up and down sides are red, it means that our side is vulnerable. Mojo, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Okay, I understand the alert part of it. What if you, when I do not alert and my left-hand opponent asks for an explanation, you know, normally the explanation comes from my partner, but the alert um, and telling what, what the explanation is, uh, uh, is that part of the same alert process? Yes. Um, I'm, let me show you how that works because that's right here on my I'm going to read I'm going to redeal this hand and start with a new hand and uh, this time okay let's say that north makes the first bid and let's see where is north <laughs> I've got looking at four screens okay let's say that we're passing and our opponents bid um, I'm going to have them put in a a ring. I like to do this, by the way. Um, now, East here, when they made the one no Trump bid, they typed in 15 to 17 in the explanation box before they made the bid. That's It's a courtesy. It's not entirely required, but it is a courtesy. And uh, let's say that South passes, and now West bids two hearts and North passes, except that North is curious about, North is curious about that, uh, <laughs> about that two heart bid because they're suspicious that it might be a transfer. And, and the player who made the bid didn't, alert it or say anything about it. The correct thing to do if it were a transfer would be they type in transfer and then make the bid so that the opponents would know it's a transfer. Um, what you can do now is tap, tap the bid. And I'll show you what that looks like in, in a moment. When you tap the bid, over at West's table, there's a little box that says, please explain two hearts. And so now, um, West can say uh, transfer to spades and press OK. <laughs> I got an extra M in there, but that's how the explanation happens. And then let's say North passes, East uh, pass, 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 and East bids to spades. and south passes we'll just leave it at that so another question on that um mm -hmm. so the tap was from north doesn't doesn't show up the uh, show the show the um, dialog box that says what's your two hard bid but i see as uh, but i see the explanation uh, and i'm not sure which part i am uh, is that still north that gets the explanation nobody else does Is that is that two heart explanation only seen by North or is it seen by South also? Can't hear you, Morris. I believe it is seen by both opponents, but not your partner.
Okay, I think I understand that. That makes sense because if the partner gets it, then it's conver uh, conveying information from west to uh, east. Okay, here we go. Now, Michael, ask your question again. I'm sorry. I think my headphones died. Oh, the question is, North asked for an explanation, which I didn't see, uh, but got an answer. Right. That answer goes to both north and south, but not to east, right? That's correct. The explanation does not go to your partner. It only goes to the opponents. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay I, I'm a little confused about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that part, but one no Trump pass, two hearts. No uh, explanation. Do I have to, because normally my partner would say transfer, do I need to put a circle around that first? Do I need to alert that myself or do I have to wait until someone asks? Let me back this up a little bit. Um, you can do it at any time. You do not have to wait until someone asks. In fact, um, if, uh, let's see, I haven't made any bids here. It's my bid. If I say I mid uh, to no Trump here, and I decide I want to go back and explain that bid, I just tap my own bid, and I put in an explanation here. And then the opponents will see the explanation, but my partner will not. I understand that part, but back here, where it is going to be a transfer. Yeah. Okay, without that, without North or South, without North asking, uh, who, who announces that? The player who makes the bid. That's what I'm asking. And in doing, so I've made the two heart bid. Do I put an explanation? Yes. Okay. You can do it at any time. You don't have to do it before you make the bid, but if you, if you make the bid and then you remember, oh, I have to explain that. Then you tap the bid, click on the bid and, um, and it will, Let's see, say I want to explain my pass. This, my pass from the first round here, I can say, uh, no bid. <laughs> yeah, like. okay. So, so you we can get go, to... Yeah, you can go back and explain an earlier bid. All right. You can even do it during the play of the hand, which is, I mean, I, I'm not sure I would, but if you're in the play of the hand, um, and uh, let's see, whose bid is it? It's West bid, pass, pass, pass. And not all touch screens. Um, and now we've got West making a lead. There's a lead. And we're in the play of the hand. Um, you can pop up the auction and you can come over here and tap a bid and it'll pop up an ex please explain box and somebody and ask somebody to explain their bid after the hand has already started. Mm. No explanation. Mojo, I've got a question. What if somebody asks you to explain a bid and you don't explain it. What happens? Um, you get exactly this. Let's see, what did I do? It was this one. No explanation available. Mm -hmm. if, you, uh, if you just click OK on the explain box, that's what they get. No explanation available. I don't recommend doing that. I say, you know, put something, put something in the box. Say it's just a natural bid didn't mean anything special, or we have no agreements about that bid. So. That's the main, the main difference in online bridge and, and live bridge is that you, you alert and explain your own bids, not your partners, because the explanations only go to the opponents. Your partner doesn't see them. So, so Mojo, another comment, I guess, really, um, in the um, lobby, uh, you can uh, um, send a message, I think, but that message goes to all, all of the other um, players, right? Let's talk about that. This is the chat window down here, um, and if I uh, if there's a there's a box, this is where I type a message, and where it goes is determined here. If you have kibitzers in the room, then the message will go to the kibitzers. Uh, generally, you want to go to the table and and click chat. And this is this is and the message now will be seen by everybody at the table. 
what you cannot do is send a message to your partner, but, uh, but what you can do Yeah, uh, Randolph's just asking. Uh, quite, I'll get to that in a moment, Randy. I, I think he, I think you're right. You had to pro probably purchase the robots. Um, you can send a message to the opponent saying, uh, you know, my partner is really, really good, and that goes to the opponents. So they see it in their chat boxes, but your partner doesn't see it. Um, and if you wanted to talk to, say, the director of the tournament, you would use a private or say, I wanted to send a message to myself, my regular account. If I'm not online, which I'm not at the moment, it'll show up in my, in my inbox as mail. It says mail delivered here to Mojo LA. Um, so that's kind of how the chat works. The important thing is that you notice where is your message going? I can send a private message to one of these two people because I just did. I can send one to the lobby or to the tournament or to the opponents or the kibitzers or the table. So select where you want your message to go, type your message here, and then click chat and the message goes there. Let's see, that's how chat works. Um, this is good. Does somebody else have a question? Yes. Can you hear me? I, I can, yes. I'd like to you to explain the IMPs. Oh, um, when I created the table, that's a good question. When I created the table, I didn't specify the scoring method, but there are basically two duplicate scoring techniques, master points and imps. Uh, imps is commonly used at team games where the scores are compared with your scores are compared with other tables. It can also be used as pair game at pair games where how well you did. Um, it, it, it's a different way of rating the scores than from match points. Uh, match points, your score is how many tables you did better than. Uh, imps is how much better you did than the other tables than the average of the other tables. Uh, that selection is made at the time you create the table. Um, in the casual bridge club, you can choose whether you're playing imps or match points. And I think imps is usually what they, what they settle on. When you're playing in the virtual bridge club, it will always be match points. Um, there is an interesting thing about this box right here, the one that says imps. It has a score for north, south, and east, west. There is no score because there is no other table to compare with. Uh, and also we haven't played any hands actually, we've just gotten as far as you know, open, making an opening lead. Um, but if you tap on this box, if you've got a history, if you're in the middle of a game, say you're in the third round of, of a tournament, you can tap on this box and it will show you what your results have been for, the, for all of the previous rounds. So say you're on board seven, uh, you can tap this box and you can see what your score has been on boards one through six from the round one and two. But when you're playing a casual game, can you uh, start the IMPs as zero, zero? Yes. How do you do that? When, uh, I may be wrong about that. Um, I, have, I haven't been in the casual bridge club for quite some time, but I believe in the casual club, they still share boards with everyone else in the world which means that when you join a table, the boards you get will be the ones that everyone in the world is playing and your score will be compared against what everyone else in the world has done. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, one right. thing I have noticed is that when we played in the casual bridge, which I have mm -hmm. frequently, uh, I will get the same hands. As what? And be dealt the same hands. My okay. partner and I will have the same hands. I mean, not the same hands each, one, but we will have the same pair. We'll be bidding on this game we played yesterday. I would drop a note to support at BBO and ask about that. How do you do that? Email uh, support at bridgebase.com. 
But I did. Set the score. You can set the score to zero if you're the table host by tapping on the three lines up at the top blue box with the three lines. Yeah. You tap on that, it says reset score. score, but only the table host can do that. Okay. Uh, I'm the table host because I created this table. That's what the little crown here is by my name. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's a reset score and you can do that. I can also change the deal source to be uh, random deals or oh, random view graph deals. That's kind of interesting. I'll do this, see what happens. These menu bucks, buttons are worth looking at to see. This is a, uh, here's something to show you, by the way. There's a different way, you, if you like this, I, I don't. I, I guess some people prefer that. If you select hand diagrams, instead of seeing the actual cards, you can play it this way. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? No, I don't like that. <laughs> but how did you say you could, what was it, reset or change the deals? Okay, where, you, where was, you see this button here, the hamburger icon? That's what we call that. Yes, I see it. Yeah, click on that, and there's an option to reset the score. Got it? Yeah, but I mean to change the hands. You said oh, to do the... Uh, change the... the the uh, table map, oh, let me go back to pictures of cards. The uh, table owner, which is me right now, I can change the deal source here to uh, randomly selected view graph deals. Let's try that. And what, and what is that? View graph deals. I don't know. It's yep. some deals. Here they are. Uh, presumably, these are hands that were played at some tournament in the world somewhere. And so oh. if you wanted to compare with how you did against the pros who were playing a view graph. Because on, on Bridgebase, you can watch tournaments. You can watch uh, team matches. And, and they do what's called view graph, where you get to follow along with the bidding and the play. Oh, really? How do you do that? <laughs> I'm going to leave that as an exercise for later, <laughs> uh, because I okay. have some other things that I want to cover here before. <laughs> Um, I'm going to close. Oh, Joe, yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, uh, sure. What do the stars mean on, on a regular screen next to somebody's name? What do the stars mean? Stars are pro players. Those are notable, distinct. They're they're celebrities, celebrity players. Mojo, also, I've noticed that on the bottom here next to the names are numbers like two or three or something of like that. What does that mean? Uh -huh. Well, let me show you. I'm going to log off of this, and I'm going to log in as me. My number is uh, 15, I believe. That number relates to how many master points you have won on Bridgebase Online. Uh -huh. uh, so let's see. My, my profile oh, it doesn't show up here. But if I go to ACB World, ACBL World, Oh, here, I, I see that I have a message that I sent myself earlier in the mail. I just sent myself a private note. I'm going to delete that. Um, if I join a table, um, I wonder if there's one we can watch. In general, the higher the number, the more money somebody has spent playing bridge on BBO. Um, uh, if, if it's not a number, if it's a jack, queen, king, or an ace, that's a celebrity player. It's someone who has earned a championship somewhere and has earned a, a badge on BBO. That's, that's all that is. I wanted to show a little bit about the settings that you can change. And I don't use the default settings very often. I'm going to go back to the defaults here. When you, when you log into BBO, generally, this is the home screen. This is what you get. It's a split screen. And on the right is going to be messages or uh, your friends, a list of your friends who are online, uh, history or account. Those are all on the right-hand side. And on the account, one of the things you can do is change your settings. I do a couple of things that I particularly like. I turn off the split screen myself. Um, it, it isn't all that important because if you're if you're in the split screen and you you tap you tap the tab that's open it goes away you see that so that's handy uh, the other thing I do is I turn off the sound effects and I turn off the animation I think those are just they don't do any they don't add anything for me 
but there are some other things here that are useful. One of the good, one of the important points about playing online is that misclicks cannot be corrected. If you accidentally tap the wrong bid or the wrong card, you live with it. You smile and you laugh and you carry on because that is just life in online bridge. Uh, online bridge protects you from all the five big errors in play. You can't make an insufficient bid. You can't not follow suit. You, <laughs> all, all of the things that are mechanical errors at, at the table, those are taken away. But misclicks are not taken away. If you hit the wrong bid or the wrong card, you cannot correct it. Not in a tournament. There are no undos. So if you have a problem with that, there are a couple of options here that are worth turning on for you. Confirm bids, confirm cards. Before it, you will select your bid or select your card to play, and before it actually plays it, it will say, is this really what you mean to do? Right? <laughs> so um, if you find yourself getting, bug, uh, getting burnt by a lot of misclicks, clicking on the wrong card by accident, turn, go turn those on. It takes a little extra time, but it's worth doing. Uh, for me, there's another option here, autoplay singletons. I never turn that on. You don't want your singletons automatically just going out there. I, I, want, I want to actually play it. So uh, look through the settings if you can and, and see what you can find. Uh, okay. I want to show you a little bit about the history and how you can look back at the games that you have seen in the past. First of all, I'm going to turn off the split screen because the split screen is not what I want right now. So I'm turning that off. Now, history, when you turn off the split screen, those five tabs on the right, they show up down here at the bottom. I want to look at my recent tournaments. I can see my table, recent tournaments. And this is a great way to do it. This is a robot uh, day-long game that I played a few days ago. And I can see my results. I had a fairly good game. I had a 58% game. I won what, three quarters of a master point. But what's really cool is that you can go into these results and you can look at a board that you did particularly well on or particularly bad on. I saw one up here that, uh, let's see, this one was interesting. I had three clubs by East make, making an over trick. I defended this one and I wanted to see why I did so badly on that one. So I'm gonna tap on that board. And here's the board that was played. Um, I'm sitting at South. You always sit at South when you're at the, in one of the robot tournaments. Uh, and you see that I opened it one spade and it came around and my partner passed. And they bid two clubs on my right. I suggested two diamonds. I said, uh, and he made a qubit over here and they went to three clubs. And I'm gonna, I don't know why that was so bad. So let's find out why it was bad. You see this tab here that says other tables? Let's see what they did at the other tables. Okay, now here's all the results. This is like a traveler from everyone who played this board, board seven. Here's my result here. It's highlighted three clubs by East making one. I see that the better tables were all playing it in two hearts our way. And when I look at the hands, I can see that kind of makes sense. So if I go to this board that's, that played it in two hearts and I wanna see what they did on the auction, I can see that they also opened it one spade and went pass, pass and East bid two clubs. But then instead of bidding two diamonds here, South made a much smarter bid. He did a double, showing a few hearts and, and some. And basically it gave partner the chance to bid two hearts. And so they found the right contract. So for me, this is very valuable. I've actually improved my bidding and my play quite a bit by going back and looking at the hands that I didn't do so well on and finding out what the other tables did. You can, I can actually, once you see the bidding, you can actually go through every trick that was played in order and see how they played the hand. And I've learned a lot of, of play and bidding that way, seeing how these things go. Now, this is a game that I was playing with robot, robot partners and robot opponents, but it works for all of the games. Now, Bridgebase ran into a problem with this recently. I want to mention this because they just made a change. It used to be that the entire history of every game played on Bridgebase was stored and they ran out of space. So they've had to clear out their databases and they've been restoring it. Right now, the past seven days of tournaments are available and they're going to try and keep it to the past two weeks. So you need to look at your games within a, within a week or two in order to see 
all of your results and how that happened. Uh, any, any questions about that? That was a good one. I got the settings. Um, there's really only one other thing that I would bring up. I'm going to go back to play. Hey, Mojo. Yeah, sure. This is Gulshan. I wanted to ask you a quick question. Where do you sign up for? Uh, I'm, I'm aware of playing against robots. I wasn't aware of robot tournaments. In ACBL world or um, let's see, there are a couple of places. Here's my recommendation. If you want to practice with the robots, go here to the instant tournaments. These are eight board matches and they're inexpensive. They're 45 cents. You can choose whether you want to play master points or imps. And they're eight boards. Um, when you select one, it will confirm because it'll charge you 45 cents on your, on your bridge base term. I'm going to say no. And then you can play eight boards against the robots and it will compare you against 15 other tables that played the same hands, 15 other people. And you actually will win bridge based master points, but you won't win ACBL master points. These uh, more expensive ACBL games, they will be 12 boards, but you play against the robots that way. And those are instant tournaments. The well, other I, have, yeah. I have a question way back at the beginning when we were looking at the virtual clubs and we saw the tournaments listed. How yeah. do we know how many boards? I couldn't see it there when ah, you had it. That's a good question. Let's do that. Here's we're in the virtual club section mm -hmm. under competitive. Here's one that's starting in three minutes. Let's look at I want to show you all this stuff. Here are the details. I'm sorry I missed this. I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you. Um, it tells you the entry fee is starting in three minutes. Here's a choice where you get to uh, in, invite your partner. Your partner has to be online at the time of the start of the game. And you have the option of paying for your partner if you like. So it'll deduct you and your partner's fee from, from the game. And here are the, are the details of the game. It tells who the host is, how many boards are in play, 18, how long it's going to okay. take, an hour and six minutes, okay. and everything else about it. Um, How do we know um, the uh, conventions that the robots play? Uh, do a Google search on, a, on BBO robot conventions. <laughs> and it, it has a, a long, uh, it's a fairly complex card. Uh, I love playing it, but it is a, it's a two over one card. Uh, and oh, it is? Okay. It fairly well. Uh, Mojo? How do you load your own convention card? Bonnie, that was a great question. I was just coming to that. I'll come to that after I get this. Go ahead, Melanie. Yeah, uh, back to the robot game again. To say again where you get the where you get to look at the specific hands, how they were played and comparing them to the other hands. Where, where do you find that again? Down here, see the history button? Somewhere on your screen, there will be a history button. It's way down at the bottom. Yeah, it, not, it, I can't see it. Okay. Um, it's under uh, tournament history. But it's in history at the bottom. Right. Either okay. at the bottom. If you have split screen turned on, it'll be a tab on the right. Okay. Let me turn the split screen back on. Okay. This is how most people see it. So over here on the right is the history tab. You see it now? Yeah, right. Okay. okay. All right. Then you just click on it. Right. Okay. Thanks. Uh, let me bring up convention cards. When you join a tournament, if you don't, if you haven't set a convention card with your partner, by default, it will put up the ACBL standard yellow card. And that will be assumed to be what you're playing. To make a convention card, go to your account, first of all, this is the account tab. And there are four settings up here, profile, settings, convention cards, deal archive. Mojo, what's the difference between the two Yellow cards, I see it there twice. There's the one up on top that says ACBL, and then there it just says SAYC. Probably what? nothing. It's probably the same. I just I just may have copies of it. Okay, copy just curious. It. Oh, this is this is a, a non-standard format for it. Let me go back. How do you change from playing as a beginner to an intermediate or expert? You play a lot. 
<laughs> oh, I think I see what you're talking about. Well, I realize that, but on the, what is thing. in under the account tab in the profile? Yes. Here, skill level. You get to select your skill level here. I like to say I'm a novice. <laughs> and <there's laughs> save changes. I usually just leave it at advanced and save changes there. So oh, it's, it's in your profile. So here's the thing to do. Make a new, new ACBL convention card. And let me move this out of the way here. More. No, nope, that's as far as it's going to go. OK, this is the ACBL convention card. So you can fill this out online. You probably have, a, if you play with a regular partner, you have a copy of your convention card. Fill it in. Put your partner's BBO ID in here. Paula O, for instance. I play with Paula a lot. And then save it. And then, let's see. Save the card. Um, and then when you play with Paula in a tournament, it will pick up this convention card and it will assign it. When you're actually at the table on, on the hamburger, the hamburger menu on the upper left, two of the options are show the north south card, show the east west card. Uh, so you can actually look at, you can even look at your partner's card. Um, yeah. You can look at your partner's card or you can look at uh, the opponent's card. Uh, these games, especially if you play in the speedball games, there's just no time. You almost have to have to wing it and go by the explanations. So it's very difficult to look at a convention card when you're in the middle of a tournament. But it is there. Uh, let me stay on the page. Go back. Leave the so Mojo, um, talking about uh, timing, yeah. um, just a comment in the board, uh, in, the, in that little block, box where it talks about imps or whatever, uh, it gives you the time for the round or for the, for the uh, uh, play of the board. That's right. And the other thing is imp stands for international match points, right? International match points. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. About the time also. So when the, if it's giving you seven minutes for a round, if you're not finished, we had this happen yesterday. You're just yeah. getting off. Yes. Um, we, we will start with, uh, with our games. We'll start playing seven minutes per board. Now, what we'll do probably is do three board rounds. So when you start a round, the clock will say 21 minutes. And you'll have three boards, three boards to play in 21 minutes. If you don't finish your last board, but you've gotten through the bidding and you've played a few tricks, what happens is you the round will end. You will move to a new table. And then the BBO computers will analyze the board. They'll do a double dummy analysis and see what your likely, likely result would be based <laughs> on the tricks you've played so far. And it will assign an adjusted score for that. If the computer can't decide, then it falls back on the director and me. And I have to look at the board and see what might have happened and assign a result. If I can't decide what it will be, I might just assign averages to the board. So uh, both pairs will get average results on the board. If you yes. don't get to the board at all, you just get averages on it. That's all. Yesterday, while I was playing Mojo, somebody, I, I mean, I was waiting for the person to respond. We were in the middle of the game, and all of a sudden, she was off the table. Uh, do you know what happened then? Yes, if someone gets disconnected, this is a good tip, by the way. Thank you for bringing it up. If, someone, if, you get, if you get disconnected, or if you get frozen, or something happens, the best thing you can do is log off. Close your browser, get offline, and then log back in. It will automatically put you back in your seat. And you'll come back and everything will, yes, it'll put you back in the seat you left. Nothing, nothing will have changed. And it's a good way to kind of restore everything. It's, it's kind of drastic, but it's a good, if you really have no other hope, log off and back in and it'll, it'll reset everything. Um, if some, if your partner gets disconnected and they can't get back in or there, or something has gone wrong, then you can call the director. You can use the call director button, which is up in that in that hamburger menu in the upper left, um, and let them know that your partner seems to be gone. And what they will try and do is find a substitute for you. 
um, which is an interesting concept, by the way, if uh, substitutes. When I go to the, vulture, uh, the virtual, virtual clubs box here, down here there's a blue button that says substitutes. Mm -hmm. And I've done this quite a bit uh, lately. It's been kind of fun. It's very potluck because you don't know what you're going to get offered. If you click, I am willing to substitute in any tournament and say close, then you are every director's good friend. And see here, all of a sudden, I've just been offered a game in Turkey with a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say no to that one. If you're saying no twice, by the way, it will drop you off of the substitutes list. I'm saying no again. So no, I'm no longer registered as a substitute. Morris, I have a question. Yes, Barbara. How, how do you know which one, which games will be get, you'll be getting master points in? If you're paying extra money, you're getting master points. Okay. <laughs> points. Right. Uh, it says ACBL, you'll get ACBL master points. Now, most online games um, in ACBL world, they, they pay what are called unpigmented points or they're clear points. So they, they go to your master point total, but they don't go to advancing your rank. So right now the virtual clubs though are paying are paying black points, the same as you would get in a real brick and mortar bridge club. Okay, thank you. Okay. Moshe, when you're playing casual, is are you paying uh, to be in a casual game also? Casual games are free. Casual games are free. Okay. Casual games are free. And there's no time limit on a casual game. You can. There's you can no even problem. chat. If you're playing with people you know, you could chat with them while you're playing as a sort of a learning yes, opportunity. You yes, you can. But it sometimes will kick you off if you're too long, you're on too long, or you're off too long. Whoever started the table, by the way, if you start a table, they can kick you off. Uh, who, whoever starts the table can kick you off the seat. If you're taking too long, they can replace you with somebody else. How do you do that? Well, let's see it. Let's try it. I'm going to go to the casual club <laughs> and um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to start a table. Let's see. I'm just going to, I'm not going to reserve seats. I'm just going to say start a table at a relaxed game and see what happens. All right. Uh, I'm going to sit north. Okay, here, here's my hand. Somebody's munching needs to mute, mute their mic. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I, uh, let's see if anybody joins me. I don't want to leave the seat yet. Um, let's see, question. Yeah, thank you. Um, Yeah, nobody's coming in. Maybe I can uh, drop in on a table. I'm going to leave this one. And I'll just say, uh, take me to the first seat available. Here we are. It says who the host is. King Brian is the host. I'm playing here with uh, 999. And uh, if I tap her name, it brings up her profile. She's uh, Miran from the USA. And uh, it's my bid, I believe. I'm going to say two hearts. By the way, I came up with a great idea, something that uh, I'm going to suggest anybody who needs to leave. I've pretty much finished everything I've got. It. You can send me an email if you have other, other questions. But I have this great idea of after one of our Pasadena, Pomona, Downey virtual bridge club games of having a Zoom post-mortem. We could actually all get together on Zoom and um, Go over, look at look at the board history. <laughs> yeah, a thumbs that up. Would that would be fun. I think it would too. So I'm I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, anyone else? I am going to stop recording this because I think we're we're done with that.